Now, service truth. When it comes to service truth, how do we serve God? I don't want to hear it unless you're talking about the building up of the body of Christ. And this is something that's almost entirely missing from Christianity. We think of service as serving as an individual. And we think, I mean, I don't know what we think. We may be preaching the gospel, but you are thinking entirely of yourself. You know, we, we tend to do that. But Paul presents serving as building up the body of Christ. And most people don't have a vision of the building up of the body of Christ. It's not even in view. And so when they talk about service, they're talking about other things. Well, that's going to have an effect on their view of rewards. But it's also going to affect on what they're going to say. What does it mean to build the body of Christ? Well, there's two things. There's equipping the saints. And then there's the work of the ministry. And the work of the ministry has to do with each part the measure of Christ operating in each part through speaking the truth in love so that the body is compacted and joined together and fitted together in fellowship. Building the body of Christ means bringing people into fellowship and sharing and enjoyment. And it's based on thirst. And I've said this before, but in First John, you know, it talks about how we write these things to you that you may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. The motive for the f apostles in their ministry was a thirst to share the fellowship, which is the motive in the triune God for why he sent the Son. He wanted to enlarge the sphere of his fellowship to include us and bring us into a fellow enjoyment of Christ with the Father. And that is the goal of ministry, is to bring people into a uh, enjoyment together with Christ. And that's why you see the communication from the apostles to uh, Peter, Jane, Peter, John, and Paul. There is a sweet, tender address, beloved, there's it's so sweet you can't even believe it well that's because it's it's motivated by this love to love them and nourish them and cherish them and gather them and present christ to them so that they would begin to see and partake of him together as an enjoyment and this has to do with regeneration you know your human spirit knowing christ is there as a source of enjoyment and this has to do with fellowship we enjoy him together and that fellowship tends to be about our assurance. If you want to know what the fellowship is, talk about the assurance of our salvation and our identification with Christ. The more That's what the apostles talked about. That was what they talked about, was they presented Christ as assurance, Christ as every aspect of the Christian life, and how the believers were identified with them. And they did that out of a thirst for fellowship, and this produced the building up of the body of Christ to become a habitation of God in spirit. God wants to dwell in our hearts. Like it says in Ephesians 3, that Christ may make his, that you may be strengthened into the inner man, that Christ may make his home in your hearts through faith, and that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge so that you may be filled unto the fullness of God. He wants to produce the habitation of God. He's got a view of the building up of the body of Christ, and he knows that it is by bringing people into fellowship. And for Paul and John and Peter, it's driven by a thirst for fellowship. I want to enjoy this Christ with you. I'm not here to just instruct you how to live. I want you to enjoy Christ. And I know that there will be a living that comes out of that, but that's secondary. And I know that God wants to build up his habitation in this fellowship by Christ becoming the preeminent one, the focus and the assurance and all of the realities of the Christian life for a group of people who enjoy that truth together. And we see this with the Grace community on YouTube. We are building up each other and we have a thirst to fellowship with saints so we keep putting these videos out to gather people into a fellowship. And when it comes to, so that brings us to the future truth, glorification rewards. What are rewards for? Well, Paul talks about the way you build, right? 
when he talks about the judgment seat, he puts it in the light of building. You either build with wood, hay, and stubble, or you build with gold, silver, and precious stones. And he says, you are God's farm. You are God's building. So on the one hand, we're an organic thing where God is through his servants planting and watering and but god is giving the increase and that increase is a field of growth of fruit bearing growth of saints who are enjoying christ and that growth transforms them to become living stones for god's building so they're the field and the building and god's servants if there's a service it's related to the building up of the body of christ you're either building up things that are going to hinder the growth and the building up of the body of Christ, and that's going to be wood, hay, and stubble. You may be saved, but your works will be consumed in the fire, and you'll be saved, though, through fire. And I look at that as like institutional Christianity and, and church systems, or people just teaching naturalistically how to be a good person, how to do this, how to do that, and not ministering Christ and not bringing people into the fellowship, but actually hindering their ability to grow. You'd be right on justification and wrong on sanctification, and then you, your work will be wood, hay, and stubble. Um, and then precious stone, gold, silver. Well, these are, the, the, the silver speaks of the redemptive blood, right? Go, uh, pearl, uh, so gold, silver, and precious stone. Gold speaks of the divine life of the divine nature and the faith. Silver speaks of the redemptive blood. And then precious stones speaks of the spirit's work to produce living stones who are transformed and built together in the life of christ based on his redemption and his life based on justification the silver and regeneration the gold they become transformed to become living stones precious stones so this is what we're to build with and that is building out of a thirst for fellowship to expand the fellowship and see the building of god and if you don't have a view of the building you're not building anything and if you tear down the building if you frustrate the building you're going to suffer loss and whenever god whenever paul talks about you know the terror at the judgment seat he's really speaking in extreme terms towards those who even though they're saved, everything they do tears down the building. It's through strife, it's through selfish ambition, it's through desire to build up themselves, vainglory, contention. They are believers, and yet, and, and they, they must have justification right because they're saved. And yet, everything they do is, they're, they're babies. And yet, somehow they got in position of ministry. And they didn't grow in any of these other areas. They don't know what service is. They don't know how to minister Christ to assure people to stand in him. They don't know how to, they haven't fought through to be settled in the faithfulness of God and share out of a thirst for fellowship. So what they end up sharing damages, they should shut up, but they don't know that they're not equipped and they shouldn't even, even be talking to anyone. You know, that's the, Hey, and yet they're saved, and yet as through fire. So there is some fear about the judgment seat related to that. But at the same time, I always say, remember the generosity of the Lord that he wants to give eternal rewards. You will not lose your reward for giving a glass of water to a prophet in the name of a prophet, or in the name of Jesus. Or in the, giving a glass of the water to a disciple in the name of Jesus. He remembers it all. And remember what I said about turning to one another and speaking of the goodness of the Lord? He has a book of remembrance, and he uh, says they'll be my jewels in the day when I make up my crown. You don't have to worry. And so when it comes to the judgment seat, I don't want to hear a bunch of teaching about how I need to fear that day and labor towards it. And No. Everything is built on growth, birth truth and growth truth. T teach me about justification and regeneration. Teach me how to enjoy the Lord. And show me how I can be assured in him and show me about identification truth and show me about God's building and I'll automatically start to function. This is the equipping that will cause me to speak the truth in love and see the body built up. And I'll be glorified, we'll all be glorified together and there will be rewards for whatever is built by this enjoyment of Christ. Okay, I have to go. Hopefully this 